We are the best police department in the country, and we're very proud of it. If I can contribute, then I should. I never really lose it. When I go home, I'm still recruit Barney. You're gonna feel different when you put that uniform on. We're all learning together. We're all starting from square one. You're going through something over 26 weeks that is intense, that is challenging, that is life-altering. And the people that you share that with are the most important part of the experience. Man, it's definitely, uh, I'm feeling good, but it's gotten real, 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 if that makes sense. Um, you go, you, you're putting it all the pieces together. You know, it's not just, graduation isn't just a, a theory anymore, it's, it's right around the corner. Um, being a police officer isn't just um, something that you, you know, you want, you, you go from wanting, wanting to do it to now you're, now, you're getting ready, now you're getting ready to go do it. So it's definitely a daunting and haunting thing, but it's also a very powerful moment as well. Welcome back to Journey to the Badge. This week, the recruits are running through armed robbery scenarios. These scenarios are designed to be as close to real life as possible. So the recruits are ready for anything when they start patrol. 100% today is all hands-on training, okay? This is your first chance putting everything together, okay? This is going to be a difficult block of instruction to deal with. It is challenging, but we will not put you in a no-win scenario, all right? It will be challenging, to say the least. You will be, you will be physically challenged, you will be mentally challenged. We are going to put you under pressure because that is how, is how it is in the real world when you're dealing with these situations, okay? Sure. All right, so again, we talked about the keys, keys to success. One is, when you show up to the scene, you own it. It is your scene. You don't have enough people or enough officers at your scene. Whose responsibility is it to get more there? Yours. Yours. Yours, okay? You are going to have radios. You are expected to use your radios, okay? If you need help, you have to use your radio to call for help. Do not expect to say, hey, I need backup without using your radio, right? Because it's not going to work. All right, we want you to get in the habit of using your radios to your benefit, okay? It is a very high, a very high priced piece of equipment and it can save your life, all right? So if you don't call for backup, who's fault is it? It's yours. It's yours, all right? Uh, again, you're supposed to own the scene. You and your partner have to communicate. You and your partner have to communicate about what you're going to do. If your partner is, going, is starting to do something, or is to communicate to you that they're going to do something that you don't like, then you need to tell them that it needs to be brief and it needs to be to the point. Because again, you are under a time crunch today, okay? You're dealing with dynamic situations and decisions have to be made quickly. But it does not mean we lose our communication. That is also critical. So owning the scene and communication. I was already at you when you were ready. Once you get the two cars and you start driving, I'm going to dispatch the call to you on the radio. You can be catting me 1100 and 1200. Okay? So make sure you're listening. If you don't answer up, I'll make you drive around the building another time. So make sure you pay attention. That I'm dispatching the call. Just like we demonstrated, it's going to be an armed robbery from business with two suspects. Nothing, we're not trying to hide the scenario from you guys. It's right, plain and simple, right in front of your face, okay? They're last seen out in front of the business. The store clerk might be on scene wearing a camouflage jacket. Hands up! Hands up! Do not move! Hands up! Dispatch, start with two other units. Turn away! Keep your hands where I can see them! Turn away! Turn away! Then you rotate with me! Turn away! Run! Run! Keep those hands up! Keep the hands up and turn away! You good, Oval? Keep your hands where I can see them. Put your hands behind your back. You probably calm down a little bit. I mean, I'm just standing here. 
you get on handle. That's well. I can't breathe. This guy's on handle. Get. Stress well. Are you all right? Hey, he's got asthma. I don't know if he should be on. Hey, make sure you're not on his back, Marcus. So I thought, I thought you guys did a good job parking the side of the building. Obviously, you didn't even pull the cars up front, which is good. Um, you got good concealment. You approached on foot. Uh, he talked to the store clerk and he pointed him out to you. What was the description of your suspects? It was two white males, um, average build, both wearing baseball caps, brown shirt, black pants, and gray ball cap. Uh, the store clerk was wearing a camo, uh, camo top and uh, blue pants. And, okay. Um, the only thing I got really is make sure you guys like pick one person to give commands and one person to like communicate like go hands. I didn't have any problem with the way you guys handle it. He was compliant. You held cover for him. And then, I mean, from what I saw in traffic stops, I mean, as quick as he went hands on to take care of business, I'm, I was that's pretty good. So, I mean, he's a big guy. You, you did what you did do and good job. He called for backup and your backup got here helped you out. So that's all I got. I mean, I thought it was good, good approach. Um, and here we are again, um, combining that constitutional law and the elements and the why of how we do things um, to a real, uh, a real time scenario. Um, largely the only thing missing is live weapons and, and ammunition. Obviously we, we don't want to get anybody hurt. I was talking to my parents yesterday and they were like, what sort of things did you do to prepare? Or did you just kind of go in blind? And obviously they give you the details of the call, but and then when we have the classroom section, we're learning it like in written form, but it's definitely different when you actually have to do it. So I think as much as it's kind of like, oh, it works you up before you go in and you're like, I don't know what's necessarily gonna happen in here. I think it's better because it's way more realistic because obviously you don't know what's gonna happen when you get to a call. So I kind of like the way that they do it where they tell you the bare bones and then work from there. And if you made a mistake, you made a mistake and they'll help you and I have sure have never done it again <laughs> if it was something that I have messed up. So They're very dynamic. Um, they are very, very physical. They're very, very mental. They're very challenging. You can expect to make mistakes. You hope not to. But the idea is that everything we've been learning so far is now put to use. Understanding the why of what's allowed to happen, what should happen, maybe why this didn't happen, but maybe why this person chose to do this and, and, and this person um, decided to, to do this or that. Parts of me are still I'm like, oh, this is a little nerve wracking. I feel like there's still a lot that I don't know how to do, but then these scenarios make me realize that I do know way more. And I feel like, especially because I'm not going out there by myself, like, here when they when I call for backup and they're like, oh, your backup's here, like they're actually gonna be there to help me. People are really starting to feel more comfortable with uh, many of the concepts that we've learned, um, obviously some more than others, but uh, you know, genuinely the class as a whole is, is doing a lot better and, and just they're more comfortable with everything that we're doing. Um, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit surreal that in only a few weeks we will transition the title from recruit to police officer. So uh, it's exciting and it's, it's a little bit, little bit scary. But um, you know, that's why we're here to, to mentally and physically prepare for all that. As the recruits work through their armed robbery scenarios, they rely on their partners. The bond that is forged through the months at the academy is strong. Unfortunately, last week, recruit De Los Angeles injured his leg during PT. As the group runs through PT this week, they reflect on De Los Angeles and his importance to the class. I think that in any class, um, and ours is a great example, you truly start as a collection of individuals. But by the time you're done, for various reasons, it could be a function of time, it could be because we've done so many practical things together, uh, you know, physically and mentally, uh, we've gotten to know each other, uh, very, very well, but we started as a collection of individuals and now we truly feel like a class, uh, a, a group that we can rely on each other for almost anything. Um, that could be something with study habits, it could be something uh, very personal. You know, we've obviously lost a few along the way, most recently um, recruit De Los Angeles um, due to a, a, a 
pretty dramatic injury, so, and we're still supporting him. So it's, it's that family group concept that is probably the most, um, the most apparent for me. That was definitely heartbreaking. That was, that was hard, because, I mean, I was, I was at the top of the hill, um, or at the bottom of the hill, I mean, as he was coming down, um, and him, Madison and Roth Payton, I believe, were running next to each other, and I saw him scream and, jo and drop, and I was like, what just happened to him? Immediately run over, and he was holding back here. So we all knew something with his hamstring, but had no idea how bad or even really how it happened. I think it just pulled as he was running. It is naturally difficult to lose a person this late in the process. Um, it did not help that D'Lo was, was a squad leader. He was a very a prominent figure in the class. A lot of people respected him. You know, a lot of people turned to him for advice. The Los Angeles was a really, really good mix of, uh, as a former Marine, he knew how to take care of his people, but he also knew how to have fun and be very personable with everyone. And uh, he was a little bit of a class clown and that's okay. As long as you can turn it on and off when you need to, he was very, very good at that. Um, so he made everyone feel very comfortable with how he spoke and how he was. His squad loved him. I think it's also really cool to see how, when something like that did happen, the staff knew, everyone in our class knew, like how important he was to all of us and how much of an asset he was going to be to this department. That, like, when Officer Bethay, Officer Dunstan, and Officer Ganey went to the hospital that night to go see him and took shifts bringing, bringing in things, and how the class has stepped up to bring diapers. Um, stuff like that to him and his wife, who's, they both have been very, very grateful and appreciative. Um, but I think it's just cool, kind of, like how you said, it feels like a, a family. While it's tough for the class to deal with such a difficult loss, preparation for the state test must go on. Class 196 is taking some time to study for the final exam. Recruits Suber and Williams tell us about some classmates that help the class with notes and quizzes. You know, I would still write down you know, and take all my notes and things like that. But to be able to come back to Zerebric, we kind of called her the scribe, to be able to, you know, find the Quizlet and study the Quizlet and have that dependability and that support. Again, that, I think that's what I meant a little earlier about you never know where the support is going to come from. And Washington and Zerebek really did have a reputation for being consistent. You know, you knew that by the time you got home ready to study, it, it was going to be there. Um, it was always there. Um, they were integral, I, I know, with a lot of people. Um, and I think that's just one of the ways the class pulled together. Um, M. Barry did a lot of study things. You just find it right there in your email. So everybody played a part, and it's definitely a solid group. I think if they were all here, I could go down the line and say something about each of them, their, you know, the wife, the kids, the family, in-laws even, you know, hobbies. One person speaks three languages, you know, just the things you find out um, and learn about people. It's, it's really endearing. What I've been doing is like I've been using a lot of the practice, practice exams. I've been going through them and uh, if there's uh, material or blocks of instruction that I'm just, I'm not really understanding. I'm not getting those correct, uh, uh, questions correct on those practice exams and I'm going back and I'm reviewing that plan along with the training objective. So you, you help studying controlled substances. Well, uh, we had a classmate all throughout the whole entire semester that we, or months that we've been doing this, they've been taking the training objectives, putting them on a dock, answering them. And you know, we, we have like pretty much like a little catalog where we go, each, each block of instructions will go and we'll, um, it has the block that we, we learned and training objectives underneath that, and everything that we need to know about that block that's in, that might be important or it might be on the state exam. You go and you look at that, you look that over, and it gives you a really good um, overview of that section. So Rebic and Washington, um, they've definitely stepped up um, and just, and Washington brings, uh, not only does he bring what he's learned uh, from this uh, uh, one nine, class 196, but he's also bringing from what he learned from previous. Um, he, he was a recycle, and so, Having his knowledge is like infallible almost because um, he's he's seen the state exam before, he's seen a lot of this uh, material before, and having him be able to um, really kind of guide us in the direction of 
uh, what exactly um, you know we need to really be studying for. Zarebic, she does a really good job of um, uh, making the Quizlets. Um, she's very inclusive with all her, uh, her uh, Quizlets. You know, there's um, stuff that you might have discounted. She's got it on there. Um, uh, Mackenzie Berry, definitely another one. Uh, she sits up front, she's very articulate, and she, uh, she can type fast. So whenever the uh, instructors are going over review, she's fire her hands at the keyboard and getting, uh, getting all the questions down for everybody else. The final pulp hat is today. All the recruits must pass the physical test to become an officer. All the hours of PT have helped prepare the recruits for this test. I had a bad run the first time. So we did it again, and I got you know a good score that I'm happy with, and the dummy drag, and things like that. When you try them early on, you know, you might be gassed, or you might barely make it. Um, but when you can do it, and do it on time, and be comparable to your peers, it's, it's, a, um, it's a rewarding feeling. With the third popat, I had to remember what I'd learned from the second popat. Um, you have to breathe, you have to control your breath, um, you have to stick to your strategy with how you're gonna do your push-ups and everything. It, it looks like you're just running, but it's really kind of controlled. What did I say? Fast is smooth and smooth is fast. The first run this time, I ended up touching the tape, and if you touch the tape, you have to go back, and that cost me some time. I was doing more push-ups than was in the plan, and um, as my commandant said, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? So I shouldn't have changed how many I was doing because then, you know, you'll get gassed too soon. Um, my shoe came off doing the uh, dummy roll, so I um, was sure to wear some high tops. You know, things like things you don't think about. Next week, the recruits will work on firearm tactics. Be sure to tune in.